What's up, Internet? We are here once again with the treasure chest of awesome and my jazz hands. Yeah. Um, it has been about six months since the last time we did this, and a lot of people seem to enjoy that from what I saw, and I had fun, so I figured let's do it again. Uh, it has been six months, so we do have a lot to get done uh, in a very short period of time. Um, my camera does only have the ability to record for about 12 minutes at a time, so there's going to be some weird jumps, I apologize. But uh, let's let's make do with what we have, including our reappropriated uh, floodlights over here. Uh, anyway, when we last left our incredibly handsome and charismatic hero, he had acquired a gold badass PS2 from Japan. He needs some games for it that aren't pointies point. So uh, he got a few. So let's start off with uh, a bala burn over here. This is a PS1 fighting game, kinda. It's also an adventure game. I think the best way I can describe it is sort of like uh, those old toe ball games, how they had that sort of weird adventure mode that didn't quite work, except it actually kind of works here. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Unfortunately, this is also where I learned that if you don't have a PS1 memory card, you can't save to a PS2 <laughs> with PS1 games. Um, I, I need to get on that, I guess. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But fun game, fun game. That was one of the more interesting uh, imports we got this time. Uh, next we have Robert Mondieu. This is the fourth game in the Jumping Flash series. I know what you're thinking, there were four, yes. The third one was a Japanese-only pocket station game, if you can believe it, but uh, I've always wanted to play the Jumping Flash games. They've always interested me. I've never been able to get my hands on any of them. Uh, I've heard this one's actually pretty rare and awkward to uh, try and get a hold of, and it's a little bit different because it has more of a sort of mission-based gameplay as opposed to everyone, every level being kind of sort of somewhat similar, based on what I've seen anyway. Um, but again, it, it's PS1. I don't have a memory card. I can't do much with it yet, but... Uh, very interesting game. Oh, next we have Kamiwaza on the PS2. And uh, thank you, autofocus. I, I really need to use my autofocus. Uh, anyway, this is an interesting little game. I would say this is like the Japanese equivalent of Thief the Dark Project. And I freaking love Thief the Dark Project. Um, basically, it's a third person running around game where you try and steal everything and anything that isn't nailed down or on fire. And uh, it's very Japanese. It, it doesn't seem to take itself very seriously. Like if you get caught by an enemy, you've got like this cartwheel move that just sprays rainbow glitter over your enemies to confuse them. Very Japanese, very fun. I, I think this is probably one of the best imports I've played this year. Next we have Ichigeki Sacho. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, this is based on a manga. I don't know much about it. Apparently there's a toy line, and uh, I thought it looked pretty cool. I have seen one of the toys. I tried to get it, and I unfortunately could not. But you play as one of these little dolls uh, running around trying to basically kill bugs. It, you're, you're basically a pest control device that looks like a little doll, and you can like dress up and uh, wear all sorts of little costumes and stuff that give you different stats and try different weapons and stuff. Not a very complex game, but man is that a fun game. I, I like that one a lot. Uh, next we have uh, Dream Match TV World Heroes. I, I don't remember what the full name of this is, but it's uh, Dream, Dream TV Match something World Fighters. Uh, it's, it's basically if you took Konami characters, Takara characters, and Hudson characters, as it says up here, and you made them fight each other. I've got footage of it. It's pretty fun, actually, and there's not many games where you can say you played as Bomberman and beat the ever-living shit out of Optimus Prime. Okay, Convoy, because it's the Japanese one, but still. Really interesting game. I had some fun with this one. Oh, this one I've got some bad, uh, bad uh, vibes with. This is Hungry Ghosts. This is like a first-person horror game, and uh, I bought this for Halloween. I was gonna do a Halloween episode, because I like to do a special Halloween episode every year. And I bought this from a specific um, online seller on eBay, anti shoutouts to seller Dora underscore TS. Uh, fantastic selection of cheap games, and you have about a 10% chance of ever seeing them if you buy them. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking, why would you buy it from someone if you knew you weren't going to see it? Well, 
I didn't buy it from them. That's the weird thing. I actually tried to buy it from someone else's store and somehow it bought it from them? I, I, I have no idea how that works, but that's how it happened. Uh, fortunately, we did get it, but it showed up November 1st. Similar to when I tried to get uh, Zombies Ate My Neighbors a couple years back. So uh, we're good for next year. This one's a little weird. I, I can't remember the full name of this, but uh, the, the full name of this doesn't matter at all because I bought this game um, because of how the Japanese seller listed it on eBay. They had it lab uh, labeled. They had it labeled as Art Deco Truck Battle 3. And when you see a title like Art Deco Truck Battle 3, you just have to have it. And uh, it, it's not that great a game. It's uh, pretty bland. You drive down a very narrow road racing your opponent. Your opponent has unlimited durability. You have limited, which makes it kind of crappy. But there's an incredible amount of customization here. I went trying to like customize my truck for about 10 minutes and the customization options are so deep. I It took me about 20 minutes to figure out how to add uh, side view mirrors. So uh, this is a game you buy for the concept and the goofy title the uh, seller puts it at, but not necessarily because it's that great a game. But uh, it's, it's an it's a memorable import, if nothing else. Uh, this one is Boku wa Chisai, I believe that's how you pronounce it, and uh, I've been informed by my girlfriend that translates to I am small, which you are. You play as this little uh, tiny alien robot running around a house, and I'm not really sure what goes on in this game. Like, I, I want to say it's like the PS2 equivalent of Chibi Robo, but I've never played Chibi Robo. I, I want to, but um, I've got a gameplay video up of this and I have genuinely no idea what I'm doing in this game. I ran into a room where this guy popped out of a boom box and then the house exploded and then I went to like another room where the kids were and then suddenly the house exploded so uh, I don't know. This this one's definitely one where you got to sort of uh, fumble around a bit to understand what's going on if you don't know Japanese which seems to be the case. Uh, this one I'm pretty excited about. This is uh, Rironi Kenshin. Uh, it's based on my favorite manga and anime. It is a beat-em-up. And, uh, well, that, that's pretty awesome. Um, there aren't a lot of Kenshin games out there. There was an RPG on the PS1. There was a fighting game on the PS1. There was this, and uh, I think there was like another like visual novel on the PSP or something. So really, this is probably the most easy to ap apprehend, easy to comprehend uh, if you're importing, but uh, I was glad to get this because I'm such a huge freaking Kenshin fan. Uh, just great character, great story. If you haven't seen Kenshin, you should, because it's really good. Uh, okay, now these next games don't have boxes, and normally that's not a problem for me, but the problem with these was that... I'm going to make a lot of noise, I apologize. The problem is that uh, they're discs, and that's a problem. But these next ones have a recurring theme, and to test how with it you are, I'm going to uh, show these to you, and then I'm going to ask you what the recurring theme is. So, we have Gundam. We have Gundam. We have... Hold on. Let's get the light on that. More Gundam. Holy crap, more Gundam. Gundam. And finally, Gundam. Now, if you didn't catch what the recurring theme with these games is, it's that they were all printed on discs. And also they're Gundam games. Um, this is Gundam Battle Master. This is basically Gundam Battle Assault 3. I know there was a Gundam Battle Assault 3 on the PS2. Let's, let's try and get the light out of that entirely. There we go. Um, and we didn't get this one in North America because it had some really odd choices for mobile suits. I know, uh, for one thing, you can get like the double Zeta, which of course we never got over here. And the weird thing about it is none of them are piloted by their actual pilots. They're just piloted by random people, which makes no sense. So that's, that's a weird one. Uh, this is Gundam One Year War. I haven't played much of this at all, really. Uh, I haven't had time, but it's one of the Japanese exclusives. All of these are. I didn't want to buy any of the uh, North American ones, and they were all a dollar each. This is Mobile Suit Gundam version 2.0. Um, I actually don't know much about this game. I know it's a first-person uh, Gundam simulation style game from what I've seen, and that's actually really cool. Kind of reminds me a bit of the Blue Destiny, although I like the Blue Destiny more, of course. 
But what really confuses me is down here version 2.0. Um, I know there was a 1.0, and I'm not sure if it's like the Zeta Gundam games on the Saturn, where there were two games named the same thing, and one was just like a sequel, and they just sort of expect you to know that, or if it was like the same game and it was just an upgrade, I'm not sure. Uh, I know there was also like two limited editions based on both versions, so that's, that's the thing. Uh, we have Gundam Seed. I've never been a big Gundam Seed fan, but uh, the disc looked like a Haro, and like the rest of these, it was all a dollar. So that's kind of nice. Uh, this one I did actually go very far out of my way to get. This is uh, Gundam Seed Rango vs. Zaft 2 Plus, I, I think is what it's called. And um, I'm a huge fan of Mobile Suit Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam. It was basically Gacha Force with Gundams, and I love Gacha Force, and I love Gundams. But the thing is, if you look at more contemporary um, Gundam vs. games, they are now like two-on-two -two fighting games. The very first Rango vs. Zaft game, which was the one that followed Gundam vs. Zeta, was the one that started that trend. So I'm not wildly enthused about it, but I've got it. And uh, this one is Climax UC. And I'm not super familiar. I haven't had a lot of time to play all these games because I've had just so much on my plate with uh, work and, uh, well, lack of work, finding jobs and uh, making videos and family and a bunch of other stuff. But pretty... Pretty good little Gundam selection. Got a few others here that are not Gundam games. Uh, we've got another Century Episode 2. I've been told this is like the special uh, vocalized soundtrack edition. Uh, you can see footage of it on my channel, but uh, I, I've been told that's the special version and it costs a dollar, which is kind of nice. Gonna bump my camera. I'm also seeing a flashing number, which makes me terrified that I'm running out of time, so I should probably hurry. Uh, we've got another Cemetery Episode 3. Uh, it's kind of funny. Um, I have all the Another Century Episode games on uh, the PS2, except the one that actually has my favorite mobile suits. So I've, I've got the one with the Wing Zero Custom array, but not, uh, not the Wing. Never the Wing. <laughs> oh well. Uh, next we have Intelligent Cube. This game is really rare. It's a very simple puzzle game where you're running around trying to not get crushed by blocks while eliminating them. Very fun game, very simple, but really, really fun. Uh, this is TV DJ. This is a weird game. It's kind of like you're cutting music video footage together to like a, a beat, if I recall. Uh, I have not spent a lot of time with this. This is a bit of a confusing game, but it was basically free. So I'm not complaining too much for that one. <laughs> This is a game I actually did own beforehand. Uh, this is Simple 200 uh, something something something. It's Earth Defense Force 2 on the PS2. Um, I When I was going around buying all the various import PS2s to try and actually play import PS2 games, I, one of the first games I bought was the European version of this so I could play it in English, but uh, of course my European PS2 didn't work. So this is the Japanese one and uh, well, it's EDF, which is awesome. I love EDF. It's uh, the best budget game series ever. Next we have Ganbare Gomon. There was a few of these on the PS2, PS2, PS1. There's one on the PS2. This one is a 3D platformer, not unlike Mystical Ninja starring Gomon, although this one gets ragged on a lot because it's not really all that great. Uh, still, I have a lot of um, fun with it because I, I just love Gomon. Gomon's awesome. And this one I haven't played any of, but uh, this is by Namco. It's called Star Ixiom, and from what I can tell, it's kind of like Colony Wars. I've really wanted to play those Colony Wars games, and when I saw this for a dollar, I just had to jump on it. And uh, I did. And uh, flight sims are fun. Flight sims are fun. Probably never going to be as good as TIE Fighter, but uh, you know how it is. Okay, now this next set of discs, because we're, we're still on discs, is a little bit special. See, I saw a listing of a bunch of PS2 games, disc only, and... I saw like one I really absolutely wanted, but none of the rest. And I literally bid the minimum and I won. So uh, I got the one I wanted plus a few extras. So we have Ark the Lads, Twilight of the something, 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 Spirits. I can't read on my uh, my playback over here. I uh, haven't played it at all, but uh, I've wanted to play the Ark the Lads series. Uh, we've got Soul Calibur 3, um, more Calibers of Soul, I, I guess. 
I actually don't know much about Soul Calibur 3. I know 2 is the one that had Link on it. I know 4 was the one that had the Star Wars crossovers, and 5 was the one that had Ezio. And that's about all I know about them. Uh, this one I have played before. This is Suikoden Tactics. This is actually the only Suikoden game I've ever played. I remember not thinking it was all that great. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to play it again and find out. But uh, it feels like a kind of bad tactics over knockoff. Tactics over. Tactics ogre knockoff. Um, not a big fan. Not a big fan. But again, I haven't played it in years before my original copy was stolen. We have The Sims Bustin' Out. I think this was the bad one. Well, not including like the My Sims games. It, it was that or Herb's Sims in the City, but one of these Sims games was kind of crap from what I remember. Uh, I haven't played a lot of Sims, but uh, what I have played of Sims I kind of enjoyed. But I find that it brings out like the worst in people as well. Like it, it just gets like weirdly controlling and stuff. There, there's some weird like psychoanalysis you could do about people who play Sims like that. Uh, next we have Final Fantasy X Charlie's Angels Edition. This is the second copy I didn't want to get, but I still have for some reason. Uh, yeah. Never a big fan of uh, Final Fantasy X to begin with, and that's even less of a reason to have Final Fantasy X. Uh, we have The Sims 2. I actually have the PC version, but uh, Sims 2 is pretty fun. I again, brings out some weird things in some people, but, <laughs> you know, if you've got, like, the God Complex, you'll probably enjoy that a lot. Uh, next we have La Pucelle Tactics. This is a must-have um, from this lot, and I gotta say, I already own a copy. <laughs> um, really fun game. If you're into the Disgaea games, this was actually the predecessor to it. Like, Disgaea was La Pucelle Tactics 2, essentially, like, to the point where the character from La Pucelle Tactics cameos in Disgaea. And uh, what I remember in this game, aside from it being really fun, is... Levels had like splitting chapters and routes and stuff and depending on the route you took the story and like the outcome of the story changed and that was really really cool. I remember thinking this game was a lot of fun and it was and it has Jennifer Hale in it which is always a big plus for me. And finally the one thing I wanted from this thing. Drakengard because I, I love Drakengard 2 so much. Um, Unfortunately and I'm not entirely sure because I haven't listened to like the soundtrack to this game or anything but when I was playing this, and you'll be able to see like the gameplay footage of this eventually, the music is either really, really repetitive, or my disc is kind of borked because the music sounded like it was like repeating itself a lot. So I might have kind of a crap copy, but I paid about fifteen dollars for all these discs, and Dragon Guard alone normally goes for like forty-five. So that's that's not too bad. Uh, what else can we go for? Because I'm running out of time, I think I can roll for about twenty-two minutes. So. Got about four minutes left. Uh, next we have Bujin Yai, also known as Gact the Video Game. You know, the one that isn't Gundam Versus. Uh, it's an action game. A uh, long time viewer in front of the show, Nico Dem, are kind of swore by this game, said it was really a fun game, and uh, I've wanted a copy of this for a while. The only thing I don't like about it is it's in like this weird mini DVD case. Um, but I'm pretty excited to play that when I've got a moment. Next we have Not One. But two Snowboard Kids games, because uh, when I went to that yard sale six months ago, I regretted not picking these up. Um, I saw them for cheap. Still got to find the Chameleon Twist games, but uh, these are a lot of fun. Um, it being in Japanese, though, there's a problem. I don't know how to save in this game, because I, for whatever reason, like, I've emptied my save, uh, my, my memory card to uh, save in this game. Just does not save, like, my memory card's not big enough or anything. I've not spent a lot of time with the second one, but uh, Snowboard Kids... A lot of fun. Never played too many snowboard games, but that one always interested me. Okay, um, these next three came as a set. So we've got Final Fantasy IX, which I don't really care much for. Probably the thing I was most excited for. Wild Arms 2. And Parasite Eve. I got these three as part of a bundle of a couple of games that I bought for a Christmas gift for my girlfriend. And uh, these were just sort of like the leftovers. So. I managed to get a decent deal for a gift for my girlfriend, plus I had some uh, fun games of my own, so that's nice. Still want to get the very first one of these, Love Parasite Eve. I don't really care about Final Fantasy on the PS1 at all, really. Um, yeah. It was at least a good card game, but that's about as enthusiastic as I'm going to be about it.
I, as uh, someone I went to college with once said, you've either considered Final Fantasy VII to be the best game ever, or you played Final Fantasy VI, and uh, that's that's basically how I feel. Uh, anyway, we're about to uh, make a cut, so I'll be back in a sec. Okay, uh, now we've got some sort of potpourri stuff. Uh, first we have Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, except it's Sega Rally. Um, this this actually ties into something else I bought, um, and and we'll get to that. But I bought this from a seller who doesn't normally sell games, from what I can tell. It was a dollar, and I actually wanted to buy a bunch of other stuff he had. Unfortunately, the moment I bought this, they learned about like the great uh, Canadian Christmas postal strike, and I had to pay for this, and I couldn't get anything else I wanted to buy from him. Like I managed to convince him to let me buy some other stuff from him, but the stuff I really wanted, with the exception of one very large thing. Uh, unfortunately, um, I missed out on. But, uh, I do have a copy of Sega Rally, and the nice thing is it was cheap and I don't have Sega Rally. And of course, the greatest thing of all, Game Over Yeah. Game over, yeah. Unfortunately, I wanted Super Puzzle Fighter 2, so, um, yeah. Not, not that great. Uh, which way is it in English? There it is. It's upside down though. Uh, next we have The World Ends With You Final Remix. I streamed this. It's a bad remake of a game I love. And and part of me kind of knew going into it it would be like that because first of all it's a port of the iOS version. Which I've never played but this version made it kind of interesting. Unfortunately the original World Ends With You was a DS game that used every single gimmick that the um, DS had without making it feel gimmicky. Like it just utilized everything perfectly. This version has you pointing one switch controller at the TV and like recentering and just button mashing and it's bad. Like really, really bad. And it makes me sad because uh, Square Enix just cannot make for the life of them a good sequel that's not on the Game, game Gear, Game Boy Advance. As so we have another bad Switch game, Starlink Battle for Atlas, along with, you know, the panel lined, uh, R-Wing with reverse wings for style points. I, I like the reverse wing look, I guess. Um, I like the model, kind of. I don't like the game. Seriously, it's a game where you can design your own custom spaceship, and yet 90% of the gameplay, you're driving your spaceship around on the ground like a car. What? That is the dumbest idea ever. I'll leave that here for now. Uh, next we have, and this is going to shock a lot of people, a Switch game I don't completely hate. Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Uh, I will be resuming my Let's Play this in January when I actually get a chance. Um, December is just the worst time for me. Uh, I just literally don't get any sleep for an entire month just because of all the extra stuff I have to do for the channel. So, um, yeah. Uh, next we have a game I'm really disappointed in, Little Dragon's Cafe. I wanted to like this game a lot. Come on, autofocus. 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 Uh, anyway. Autofocus aside, there we go. Uh, this is made by the guys who made Harvest Moon, like the main guy behind Harvest Moon, and it's missing all the charm. The idea is you grow a little... <clears throat> you uh, raise a dragon and you run like a cafe, and in between then you have to like run around an island collecting ingredients. The problem is every day is the exact same thing. You run around to the exact same spots collecting the same ingredients, you then go back to your cafe by noon and later at 6 p.m. to make sure that your employees aren't slacking off and then you do it all again over and over and it's it slowly opens up but there's just none of like the variants that Harvest Moon had like yeah Harvest Moon you could go to the mountains and harvest the same ingredients over and over again or you could go woo a girl get married build up some townsfolk uh, affection you could go raise some sheep or something you had options in this game you don't and it's sad because I liked uh the concept is now this is also going to shock you it's a Wii U game I don't hate this is Tokyo Mirage Sessions uh, pound sign fire emblem this was originally what was fire emblem cross Shin Megami Tensei and it's not that at all it's basically persona with your personas named after fire emblem awakening characters with some weird idle nonsense on top of it but it's a bright colorful game and it's actually pretty fun and it's one of the few Wii U games I actually think is worth owning which says a lot because that list is like three titles long. Actually, that's one thing I find funny is you can make the broad statements the Wii U only has like three good games. Everyone agrees with you, but no one can agree on what those games are. Uh, next we have Shenmue Collection because I love Shenmue even though I have every other version of it. 
Excited for Shenmue 3 because I friggin love Shenmue. I uh, got into Yakuza recently because uh, I, I learned it was kind of like uh, Shenmue. Okay, now these two I got at the same time. Uh, we got Dungeons 3 and Valhalla Hills. These were $15 each at uh, Walmart because it's like the only store we have now. And uh, I got these while looking for a Christmas present for my girlfriend at the time. I haven't opened these yet again, I just haven't had time, but they were super cheap. And this one specifically looked like it was, as it says on the cover here, uh, Dungeon Keeper meets uh, Warcraft Rock Paper Shotgun. I'm holding you to that Rock Paper Shotgun. I want to play some Dungeon Keeper. Don't know about the other one, but it was cheap. Uh, this one I got for free, and I've mentioned this once before in one of my Pokemon videos. In this town we have like this weird initiative called like the Little Free Library where people put up like these mini post boxes in their yard and fill them with books. And for the second time in my life I found one that had a game. This is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. Um, now, still haven't played it yet, but I went and deposited one of my extra games from my trade list in there to hope uh, continue to foster more free games for people because I think that's a really cool idea and I hope someone takes up on that. Uh, next we have an Xbox game I've wanted to play for a very long time, Gun Valkyrie. And this game's got a wonky camera and a really awkward control scheme, but it is a blast to play. Uh, you run around with like a jetpack and like a gun and it's it, it's fun. I like this game a lot Although I haven't played very much of it. I got lost in like the second level because of uh, an awkward spot the camera didn't pick up on All right next we have a game. I just finished a let's play of Bomberman Jetters I prefer the Game Boy Advance thing to this, but it's better than Bomberman Generations um, Yeah, it, it's okay. Although the last two areas are bullshit um, it's better than Generations for the most part. Uh, next we have the only game I've ever found at a thrift store. In, in fact, they don't stock games there, so it was weird that I found this. I found it in a DVD section, but... Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess on the GameCube. Now, I have the Wii version. I mean, who doesn't? It was my first Wii game, but... Um, this is the one where Link gets to keep his natural lefty dexterity, and as someone who is ambidextrous slash left-handed... Um, that makes me happy, I guess. Although I'm also right-handed, so you know, whatever. But uh, it gets rid of all the awkward motion control nonsense. This is the version to get. So, I don't know, maybe I'll throw my Wii version into the trade pile. Not sure, but uh, I'm excited to have that. Uh, we have another GameCube game here. A game I have been trying to get for a depressingly long time. We have Star Wars Rogue Leader, Rogue Squadron 2. Not as good as the first Rogue Squadron, as far as I'm concerned, but it's still really, really good. Uh, the biggest problem I have with this game, other than it's lacking the V-Wing from the first Rogue Squadron, the TIE Advance, and the Assault Gunboat from TIE Fighter, is the fact that it just doesn't have as many levels as the previous or the third one. But on the bright side, it doesn't have wonky running around third-person shooter nonsense in the third one, so uh, it, it's better than the third one. <laughs> let's, let's give it that much credit. Uh, Alright, what do we got next? Okay, next we have some games that were traded to me on the Discord, and if you want to make great great game trades on the Discord, uh, sign up through the Patreon, and uh, we might just do that. Uh, these were traded to me from my girlfriend, and to make this trade, and it was very generous on her part, I traded my copy of um, Golden Sun. I, I had a secondary copy, so I traded her that. I traded her my second copy of Sonic Advance 2, 3, Sonic Advance 3, rather. Uh, I traded her my Game of the Year Edition 360 Mass Effect, because she'd never played it and she was excited to. And I traded her my English Diddy Kong Racing, because I have a Japanese one that plays the same. But, uh, first game I got in that trade was Hagane. And I have been assured as soon as autofocus will autofocus for us. I'm going to put this up here and hope that helps. Uh, this is an official Hagane card, which makes it probably one of the rarest games in my collection right now. This game is super, super, super rare. It was only made available in North America as a game you could rent from Blockbuster. So the only people who have this either have reproductions, or they worked at Blockbuster, or they stole it from Blockbuster. Super rare. And uh, it's a very, very hard game. I've already reviewed it, as I have many of these trades, as they did get uh, priority. But um, that was a lot of fun. Very, very difficult, though. Uh, the next game, and one of the ones I'm most excited about, as I wipe off some of the schmutz that it's been sitting in this pile, Run Saber from Atlas. This is 
one of my most wanted games. Part of my acquiring it. Uh, Hagane was my third most wanted game. This was my number one most wanted game. And this is basically if you took Strider and put it on the Super Nintendo. It's not quite as good as Strider, but you get to pick your characters. You get to um, move around to your, in your environment as much as you want. You can like climb around on stuff. You can crawl on walls and uh, ceilings and stuff. The enemy design is great. You can... Uh, you've got like the screw attack, you've got sword power-ups. The first boss is like climbing all over this crazy spinning jet in midair. It's just a really incredible, incredible uh, Super Nintendo game. Very rare too, apparently. Uh, next we have the second game in the Joe and Max series, Congo's Caper. I'm not very well versed in Data East. I, I kind of have a bit of a vendetta against them. I, I tend to think they're a very inept company. Um, I played Joe and Mac 2, the, the third one, because math is hard, and um, I, I found that one to be a bit more fun because it was a bit more varied in adventure. This game, I don't like that much, but it's kind of fun, and it, it actually does something pretty interesting. The first, uh, first level is basically just a giant throwback to the original Joe and Mac, and then after that it just completely flips the script. Unfortunately, it gets damn near impossible in some spots, and I, I do not appreciate that, but... It was kind of fun for what it was. Uh, next we have probably one of my favorite games next to Run Saber in this uh, trade I got. We have Ham Taro, Ham Hams Unite. Come on, autofocus. I apologize for crappy autofocus. Uh, uh, anyway, it's a Ham Taro game. And I don't remember the anime all that well. I remember watching the very first episode because the hosts of The Zone talked about it as battling robot hamsters. And instead, I was majorly disappointed. But this game turns out to be kind of like a mix of a text-based adventure and like a point-and-click adventure. Very, very fun. And it's based around building up like a vocabulary of like hamster language. I think that's a really clever idea. Really fun game, and it's probably one of the best games I've played this year. Uh, next we have Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword along with a green link Wii Remote Plus uh, I did not have a Wii Remote Plus that's why I could never play this game so she sent this along along with the game so now I can go also play like uh, No More Heroes 2 as well as I don't know, something else but um, you know it's bad. It's really bad. They like to force a bunch of crappy motion controls all over the place. It doesn't work. You've probably seen my review. If you haven't, go see it. It's like 17 minutes long of me ranting about why motion controls don't work, because they don't. Uh, next we have what was, as I understand, probably her favorite game, uh, Gauntlet Dark Legacy. This is the GameCube version. Apparently it's really, really rare and expensive. Like any other version of it, it's like $30 maybe. This version is like $100 disc only. And it's a fun remake of Gauntlet, but I, I see a lot of dated problems with it. But uh, I, I think this will be a lot of fun if you play it with someone, and uh, she is going to be over here sometime in the near future to play it with me. So that'll be fun to uh, try and play that. Uh, next we have a game I'm in the middle of reviewing and will be out by the time this is done, hopefully. Soul Calibur 2 Link Edition. This is, of course, the version of Soul Calibur 2 you want because it doesn't have Todd McFarlane's spawn or um, whoever the hell uh, the, the uh, PS2 version got. But uh, I've been playing this. It has a fun adventure mode, and I'm, I'm really digging this. I'm terrible at fighting games, but man, this is fun. Uh, this might be... Well, let's just be honest. It's nowhere near as good as Gotcha Force, but it might be easily one of the top five uh, fighting games for the GameCube. And the last game in the trade was... Donkey Kong 64. Now, I got this game as a birthday present, probably when I was, oh gosh, when I was like, maybe f seven, eight, nine, something like that. And, well, that's the thing. My family never liked video games, so when I got home to play this on my birthday, pretty much immediately my dad smashed it. <laughs> and immediate cut because even though you remove files from your memory card uh, you still have to format it or else you know you only get like two minutes of actual recording anyway yeah my dad uh, kind of smashed my copy of Donkey Kong 64 which I got for my birthday but uh, I remember this was probably the first game that made me really cognizant of developers because I'm quite a fan of Rare I love the Donkey Kong Country games and that's why I wanted this but more importantly I know they also made Banjo-Kazooie 
which was the game that had Snackers the Shark, the enemy that probably scared the most shit out of me when I was a kid. And there is a level in this game that's like a sunken pirate cove. And it's like 80% water. And I remember thinking every time I went in the water, that damn shark was going to show up and just eat me. <laughs> I think this level, or this level, this game also reappropriated some assets that were going to be in Banjo Tooie or Kazooie. One, one of the two, I can't remember. Um, I also remember there being a enemy that attacks you in first person. That scared the crap out of me when I was a kid, as well as a. as well as like a giant. Uh, haunted castle boss that was like half the time a hologram and if you hit the hologram you died instantly I remember having a lot of trouble with that boss but I'm, I'm really excited to play this again this this game was a big part of my childhood even though I mostly only got to rent it uh, okay so that's it for trades that my girlfriend made me and uh, again very very generous for those four games I traded her but uh, she also donated a swack of games, and I'm thinking of doing a thing with these recent, recently, in the near future, as in a couple days from now, perhaps, uh, if all things go well. But uh, they're certainly going to be reviewed rather soon. Anyway, uh, big shouts to my girlfriend. Love you, Rachel, for uh, sending these to the show, and just in general. But uh, first we have Draken on the Super Nintendo. Uh, I've played the sequel to this. And I, I know from the sequel, the best, the worst parts about it were the parts that tried to be this game. Uh, this was a pretty advanced game. It had 3D, like, uh, fully 3D environments and stuff, but it just didn't quite work. Uh, the only other thing I really remember from this game was this was the game Stars Fell to the Sky and Murdered You. Um, so, so yeah, Draken. Uh, next we have Dot Hack Infection. Now, I love Dot Hack. I absolutely hate the way they sell this game because this is the first in a four-part series and if you want to count .gu then it's the first in a seven-part series and I have two-thirds of GU I'm probably never gonna get the third one because it's so expensive and yet yeah, I know there's a digital copy I own it but you know you kind of have to have all three and to add salt to the wounds in addition to them just being like increasingly rare and expensive as you go through for the uh, later iterations as you might be able to see right about here, like GU, the side of the boxes form a mural. So not only do you want all four of them, you want all four boxed with perfect box art. Uh, this game I'm pretty excited about actually. This is Magical Pengel? Pengel? I'm gonna call it Pengel, that sounds right. Uh, I actually don't know much about this game, but I know it through like degrees of separation. And apparently it was $1.99. I don't think that's what Rachel paid for this, but um, uh, I remember buying for my birthday when I was probably my first year of high school, I bought a game called Graffiti Kingdom. And it was a game where you could, do, like, uh, you'd go through and you get, like, like this uh, square palette, and then you could draw, like, a basic shape and then blow it up and then, like, give it arms and stuff, and it would be, like, your own creation character. And then you could go on adventures with it. And by adventures, the game, of course, meant play a bunch of non-valuable non uh, mini-games that were completely pointless. And I remember complaining, thinking... There has got to be a game that's like this, because that is amazing, but has an actual game behind it. And I was told about this game called uh, Graffiti Kingdom, which I still want to get. And uh, Graffiti Kingdom is the sequel to this, so I assume it's going to be very similar. Uh, I'm very happy to have this again. This was a game I used to own that uh, was stolen from me. This is Shadow of Rome. Um, my uncle loves... Um, Roman stuff and he gets in like phases and uh, he got really big into Roman stuff outside of like his normal into Roman stuff and he bought a bunch of games like this and Gladius and stuff and eventually he gave them all to me and they got stolen but uh, I gotta get a copy of Gladius at some point but uh, this game was interesting because it played like two games in one you played a gladiator who sort of became like a, a legionnaire uh, the leader of the Roman army or whatever and he played like this brutal hack and slash rising Zan samurai gunman style game and then he played as like this nobleman played by uh, Scott Menville. So I'm just going to call him Lloyd Irving because of course I will. And uh, he played like a stealth game. And, and his part of the game was weird because if I, if I recall correctly, it was all about uh, solving the mystery of who murdered Julius Caesar. And if I recall, that wasn't exactly a big surprise. I'm pretty sure they celebrated it. In fact, minted coins based on it. But um, yeah, but uh, really interesting game. This game I'm really excited about as well. This is Shadow Hearts 3 from the New World. Now, Shadow Hearts 2 Covenant was one of my games of the year. It was a great birthday present my grandma got me. 
And uh, this is the fourth and final game in the series, so uh, I still have to get the second and first games, but uh, if it's anything like the previous game, it's going to be awesome and, and really, really weird, and I'm, I'm very excited to play it because Shadow Hearts 2, the one that came before this, that was one of my favorite PS2 RPGs. Uh, next we have a game I'm kind of surprised I don't own, but I don't, Original Time Splitters. Now, I have the GameCube version of the second one, and don't get the GameCube version of Time Splitters 2. It controls terribly on the GameCube, but uh, Time Splitters 3 is my favorite FPS of all time. Never played the first one, and this was a launch title. Uh, here it doesn't have much of a story, but I'm still pretty excited because Time Splitters means fast paced, run and gun action, and I love that. None of this sitting behind barriers, crying until your health regenerates nonsense. Okay, this was on my list, and it kind of was by mistake, but I'm excited anyway. This is Winback Covert Operations. Now, this was on my list because I once saw gameplay footage of this one, like, spy thriller game, and I really wanted to play it, and I thought for the longest time it was this. It was actually a game called Spy Fiction by the same guy who made Deadly Premonition, actually. And, uh... That's a great game. Uh, I, I, I need to get a better copy because my copy doesn't work all that well. But uh, this is a PS2 port of a N64 third-person shooter. In fact, I want to say Winback was the original third-person shooter that had, like, cover-based shooting mechanics, which actually makes it pretty historically important. I'm not sure how well this translates to PS2, but uh, pretty excited to see what it's going to be like anyway. Uh, next we have Shin Megami Tensei Digital Devil Saga. This is the first of two. I know there was a sequel to this. And I haven't played much of the extended SMT games. I've played the Persona games. I played Devil Survivor on the DS. And that's about it. Uh, I, I really wanted to play like the uh, hacky slashy, um, what was it, uh, Spirit Detective Rido something also on the PS2, as well as Nocturne, which had Dante in it, but this game looks really, really fun. It looks like a really fun RPG. I'm excited to play this. Means I'm going to have to hunt down the sequel at some point, too. Okay, now, out of all the games my girlfriend sent me, this is the one I know absolutely nothing about. Now, I'm not sure how well this camera's going to pick it up, but uh, down here, it's, it's advertising the Gun Con and Gun Con 2. And that tells me it's probably a light gun game. Now, I think this also works with controllers, which is good, because I do not have a Gun Con or a Gun Con 2, and I don't have a CRT to play this on. But if it works with controls, I can at least play it. But uh, I know nothing about this game, so that makes it arguably the most intriguing. And now, this is a game I've been trying to get forever. And I actually just, uh, in a few uh, previous edits, I talked about a game that came later in the series, Mobile Suit Gundam, Federation vs. Zeon. This is the very first Gundam vs. game. This is the one that came before Zeta. And most of this game actually appears in Zeta as like part of an arcade mode. But uh, I'm still very excited to play this game. Because that means it's more Gundam Gacha Force. And that's never a bad thing. And finally, out of all the games my girlfriend uh, donated to the show. This one's kind of special because it just... It's very telling of how kind and generous and thoughtful a person she is. This is Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Now, here's the deal. Uh, that list of games I traded her, this was supposed to be included in it. And it was. But somewhere between her shipping it to me and it getting to customs, they took it out and they didn't put it back. So someone stole my copy of Wind Waker. And uh, she ended up getting wind of this and she made it her life goal to collect another copy and make sure I get it. And that was incredibly kind of her. That, that's very telling of the kind of woman she is. She's just that nice a lady. And I'm very excited to play this. Uh, I have one big problem with Wind Waker, and it's not what most people have, which is like the artistic style. I love it, but I hate the world design. It's very Red Dead Redemption, where there's a huge open world that just has nothing in it. And I hate that. And yeah, it's an open ocean, but I once sailed across the entire open ocean like three times and never hit anything. And, and that's, I think, very telling of um, sort of what I have a problem with. Okay, so the next three are multi-carts! Uh, every time of, every time of year, every year around the time of October, November, I kind of get that itch where it's just, I haven't had a multi-cart in a while and I need to get a couple. So I got three this time. And uh, the first one's pretty interesting because it's a Genesis multi-cart. 
This is the best of 80s and 90s, and it has some of the best box art ever. And if you think I bought this entirely for the box art that has Ooh La La, Knights, uh, Metal Sonic, what appears to be the guy from Magician Lord, Alex Kidd, Toe Jam, and Slash or Earl, and I think... Up here in the corner is the guy from uh, Space Area, as well as Shinobi, my boy Knuckles, and Restar. You are entirely right. I bought this exactly for the box art, but uh, it was it was on sale, and it actually has a lot of great games, including probably the most notable one, which is Crusader of Senti, which is a ridiculously rare Genesis game I'd love to get a copy of. Unfortunately, this does not have the ability to save, so playing Crusader of Senti is almost impossible, unless you're speedrunning it or something, because you cannot save your data. Now the nice thing is, I do technically own this now, so I'm not offended to use the uh, digital library on my Retro Freak, but still, I, I wish it did have the ability to save. And these next two I will debut at the same time. We have the 110 in 1 purple cart and the Super 101 red cart. Now these are pretty interesting. See, the purple cart, as you can see, has Legend of Zelda, has Illusion of Guy, has Chrono Trigger has Earthbound, Dracula X, actually they both do, as well as Wild Guns. That's pretty cool. This game's got a lot of really huge um, name games, but the biggest disappointment I have, which was counter, counter, contradictory to what I was told when I purchased this, this cartridge cannot save. So basically all of these games are unplayable. Unless you want to, again, speedrun or do it all in one sitting, which is really rough, but certainly doable. Okay, uh, something weird happened to my camera. Anyway, uh, that was the purple one. It can't save. It's got some really big names on it. This one has some less big names. It doesn't have any big RPGs or anything, but it doesn't go in with the presumption that you'll actually be able to save your data or anything. And because of that, uh, I think it's a little bit better. Now, well, the purple one has some overall bigger names and more interesting names, I think this one's actually better simply by virtue of the fact that uh, while it does have bigger names and it starts and ends on bigger names, uh, everything in the middle is basically chaff, whereas this one is, I think, a little bit more averagely consistent, which I think makes it a better game altogether. But uh, fun multi-carts, maybe I'll do pirate videos on them sometime. I do have to uh, ask the Discord which pirate video uh, cartridge they want to see next after I'm done this next one. And uh, we're at the final pile. It's a very, very small one. And these are games I got literally yesterday. Uh, my girlfriend and I, we love to go game hunting together, even though we are very far apart. Uh, she always goes to, like, uh, Facebook. I always go to eBay because I can't social media to save my life, which is why I don't really have a Facebook. Um, but while we were looking at games, I saw one that, I guess, read my IP or something, and it gave me an ad listing for one that was close by. And... It was for three games for $15 or $10 each, which had some mathematic problems because I only wanted two of them, but we got Endless Ocean on the Wii, Monster Hunter Try, but I have the Wii U version, so who cares, and Endless Ocean Blue World. Now, I used to have Endless Ocean. This was actually the sequel to the previously reviewed Everblue 2, which I have to get a new copy of because my copy's kind of broken. And this is the sequel to it. I've never played Blue World, but I've played Endless Ocean, and I thought it was a very relaxing, very chill, very fun game, but not much of an actual game to it. There's only one moment where there's any sort of, like, danger, and it's immediately hand-waved, and there's no actual danger to it. Uh, this one, apparently they actually add danger and health bars and monsters that can attack you, so that's interesting, anyway. And Monster Hunter Try is a game that's, um, well, it's the preceding addition to my very first Monster Hunter, which was on the Wii U. And of course, there's my favorite monster of all time, Legiacris. I love that design so much. I, I spent so much time with this game, even though it was a game that eventually kind of required you to play with other people, because eventually monsters just had so much health that you couldn't take them out in the time limit. So I, I just ended up killing him over and over and over just because I liked him so much. Now, uh, I got those games, and I saw that uh, the lady was also selling some, and now I've got hiccups, I apologize, and uh, she was selling some PS2 games, and there was one I saw that I used to have, and I decided to see if she'd be willing to do like a, pen a bundle deal, and instead of charging me like $15 for this extra game, she charged me 5 Shepherd's Crossing. And Shepherd's Crossing is kind of like Harvest Moon, I guess. I, I remember playing this once upon a time before it was stolen and hating it. Um, the best way I can kind of describe it 
is sort of like, if you remember in Ocarina of Time, how there was that really long fetch quest of uh, trading stuff over and over to get the big Goron Sword, that was this game. Like, you start by growing some berries, then you trade the berries to make, like, uh, to, like, for a chicken. Then you trade a couple chickens to get, like, a sheep. Then you trade a couple sheeps to, like, get a pig. Trade a couple pigs to get a cow. And then, once you've got a couple cows, somehow you've saved the day. I thought it was very bland, but, uh, I still have fond memories of it, and I wish I still had a copy. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to review that pretty soon. And this is the last video game I got. Um... This was actually a Christmas present, and the thing about Christmas this year was my family and everyone around me kind of more or less agreed on skipping it because no one has money. Uh, except for my grandma, who two days before Christmas asked what was on everyone's uh, list, and we kind of freaked out and panicked, and I, I just sort of threw out some like model painting tools, which are very, very useful. So, But uh, my uncle also decided to get us some stuff, and he decided to get me a miniature. Let's see if we can get it on screen. Space Invaders cabinet. There we go. I haven't taken it out of the box yet, but uh, very, very cool. Uh, I'm not the biggest Space Invaders fan, honestly, but uh, I am very excited to have this. I think it's a very cool thing to have, and I'm definitely going to use like this box art for something as well, because I think that's very, very cool. Uh, that's all the games I have presently. I'm just going to take a look real quick to make sure I'm not missing anything. Nope, that's all the games. But we're not quite done yet. Uh, I'm going to clear this off and we'll be back for the second of three things that I'm, I'm going to talk about. So the first was games, the next will be another thing. So uh, one second, we'll be back. Okay, so cleared off the table. We're here for the second set of stuff I have, which is, you know, I ran into a bit of a personal quandary. I love video games, but I have absolutely no video game merchandise. And it kind of pissed me off, honestly. So I tried to find some cheap video game merchandise, and I, I think I kind of found some good places. Uh, this first thing is a little Mega Man statue. I, I got it at Best Buy at about the time when um, I, I got those um, Xbox One games I still haven't opened. And uh, this was for sale at Best Buy for, I, I think the original price was like $25, and they were just trying to get rid of them, so it was for sale for like, uh, I want to say... Um, about five dollars, and it does this. This little uh, Mega Man lamp. And I think that's pretty cool. I, I like Mega Man, and I, I kind of figured I wanted this one. There were a few weird ones, though. Like, um, there was weirdly like Ninja Turtles, but they weren't based on any like Ninja Turtle pixel art or anything. It was just Ninja Turtles because Ninja Turtles, but they had like Mario from like, uh, Super Mario 3 as well as Super Mario World, and it was basically nothing. And I thought that was pretty cool. So, uh, the problem is it runs off batteries, and, and that's one thing I hate about sort of like light up statues and stuff, is they don't work with, um, they don't have any sort of like a, uh, AC output, which I, if I want to have a light up statue, I want to have it lighting up in the background like all the time. I don't want to be changing batteries and stuff. Uh, for the sake of an experiment, I did put fresh batteries in this to see how long it would go, and it went for about a week. So, I, I've seen ones last longer. My uncle had a uh, Cortana one that lasted about a month before it died. Uh, anyway, uh, this next uh, set of ones I got from uh, the same person who got me, the same person who got me, the same person I bought. Um, uh, Sega Rally from inadvertently. Uh, again, that was my second purchase from them, and they just wouldn't let me purchase anything after that. But uh, these things I purchased first. And I saw a couple of things on it that I really wanted to get. And, uh, well, it was one of those situations where if you buy one thing, suddenly the shipping on everything else is free. So I inadvertently bought a bunch of stuff first, kind of hoping that I would get what I wanted. <laughs> because I'm a smart consumer. Um, but I'll try and do this in the order I got it. So first we have Sumeragi Lee Noriega, Tactical Forecaster for Celestial Being, and one of my favorite Gundam girls. And I gotta say, she's a big girl. Um, really, really detailed. I honestly thought she would be about that big, and instead she's about that big. Uh, for some sort of sense of size comparison, this is my most recently built Master Grade. The Gundam Age 2 Special Forces version, because as we all know, I am a super pilot. And if you take away the little stand she's on, they are roughly the same height. She cost me one dollar. And I've actually um, seen those also for sale online separately from other people. And she normally goes for about eighty dollars. The one weird thing though is, 
And I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there's like a weird glisten to her in places. Like, and, and if you touch it, it's like weirdly both slimy and sticky. And I have no idea why, and I'm honestly kind of terrified about it. Uh, I'm also not sure how to clean her without potentially taking off the paint, which is also not that great. But uh, still, really great statuette for basically nothing. Uh, next we have a little mini Lacus Klein, although let's just be honest. Mir Campbell, she was a better character. Uh, let's just pretend her little hair beret is, her barrette is uh, star-shaped. Uh, and she comes in this nice little mini kimono. Um, honestly, I hate both characters, but she looks roughly the same proportions and uh, size of a Gunpla, and I kind of bought her for a dollar thinking, you know, for a bit of a challenge, once I get a few more extra parts, maybe I could try and turn her into a custom Gundam girl, because I've got a bunch of uh, spare Gunpla parts anyway. I thought that might be fun, and she costs basically nothing. Okay, uh, next we have uh, what I actually went into this originally hoping to buy. We have a little destroyed gym, a ridiculously detailed little destroyed gym. Let's see if we can get that a little better. And uh, that's really, really nice. Like, that is probably 1 400th scale or something. That was a dollar, but I honestly, that and this other one that I got that I'll show in a sec, I was willing to spend probably like $15 on it just because it was really that cool to me. And you can't have a destroyed gym without having a Shar Zagok shooting missiles blowing up said gym. I think they're part of the same set, like a little, um, like a little, uh, diorama figure set, but, um, I hope there's more because I really like these guys and I'd, I'd like to get more. Okay, so the next one, it takes a little bit of explaining. This is a little tiny Dom, and uh, it's about one step better than, say, those crappy little eraser figures you can get. Like, uh, they, they look like something, but they're very clearly an eraser you put at the end of a pencil. Uh, when I went and bought stuff from this one seller, I tried to get, like, the best stuff I could get, and uh, my camera's focusing on Mega Man's face because it recognizes it as a face, I guess. Weird. Uh, anyway, I don't really like this thing, honestly. Um, in universe, I am a big Ifrit fan, so I kind of have to hate this thing. <laughs> but uh, I honestly, I don't want it. It was a dollar. I'm thinking about putting this in my box of trades for uh, as a bonus for someone who trades me a game, or I don't know if you want a mini Dom, hit me up with a trade or something, because I, I don't want it. But I know what you're thinking. Fury, it may have been a dollar, but why would you spend a dollar on something you don't want? As the old ad once said. It's not really a deal unless it's something you want. Well, there was something I wanted. I got a little AMX04. Let's see if we can get it in focus a little better. Probably not. Come on, autofocus. There we go. We got a little AMX04 Cubile. And it comes on this little stand that makes it look almost like a chess piece. And I've seen a lot of these online, and they're usually metal plated. And I don't know what sort of series these are from or anything, but I love these things. But uh, this is also a great example of what I learned about Japanese gashapons. I've never really interacted with them prior to this, and that is, if you get like a North American toy from like a little capsule machine or something, it's usually in one part, not Japanese stuff. They're, they're made like a puzzle and you kind of have to assemble it. The cubelay came in three parts, the stand, this little uh, clear bit, and the cubelay itself. And uh, the stand is actually kind of an ill fit for this because like it, it's a orb that you shove into a hole that's smaller than the orb itself so that friction holds it together. And uh, it's clear plastic and if you've ever worked with clear plastic, I don't know what the specific type of plastic it is, but uh, it's really really fragile. So it's kind of asking you to shove it in there really tight, but at the same time if you do that you'll probably break it. So uh, that, that was a bit of a frightening thing. Uh, next we have from Vampire Savior, the uh, final boss, I think his name was uh, Donovan, I want to say. It's been a while since I played Vampire Savior uh, as a woman. Which apparently is an official thing. I don't know. This thing cost me a dollar as well, but I, I thought it looked really, really nice. And uh, I, again, weird sort of puzzle pieces. Like this uh, mini skirt type thing. This is basically just vinyl wrapped around two legs that are... And this is holding it together. Like this leg has a weird sort of curved hole that you have to kind of cram the uh, little peg into. Really, really weird, but uh, once you get it in there, it's it's in there, and you just kind of have to hope. Okay, uh, next we have, in similar terms, and I'm really hoping this thing doesn't fall apart on me, 
we have vampires every her vampire savior's uh, favorite succubus Morgan Ainsland. Uh, apparently, this is from uh, Crimson Tears, which is a game I've wanted to play for a very, very long time. I think this is a Chinese knockoff or something, though, because the original one that I saw had like a blood splatter effect down here, and the sword was actually planted in the ground to support her, but there's no way for the arm to actually get that. Uh, as it stands, the only thing that's keeping her in spot is gravity and a little peg, or a little divot that her toe is sitting in, so she likes to fall off her hole a lot. Like that, because there's nothing holding her in there, really. Uh, again, I don't think this is like an official version. I know there is an official version. I think this is a knockoff, but uh, still very cool. Uh, they got the face right, and again, on these things, uh, good or bad, faces just seem to be really, really hard to get. And I, I tried to get the ones that had the best faces. Uh, okay. Uh, next we have my girl Cammy in her uh, Street Fighter Zero attire. Although it's in her crappy blue outfit. I like the green one. Uh, but I like Cammy. And uh, this is a little Cammy. Again, it was a dollar. Uh, next we have the most expensive thing out of this first set I bought. Which is, I don't even know her name, but it's the protagonist from Super Puyo Puyo with a little carbuncle on her head, as well as a bunch of little Puyos looking up her dress, which in fact does have panties. <laughs> because Japan. Um, but I thought this was obscure and interesting, and I thought it would be a fun little thing to get. Just, uh, even though I hate Puyo Puyo and I'm bad at it, I thought it would be a fun little collectible to get. And this one actually cost a lot. This was $10. A lot of people seem to want this for some reason. Uh, and right now I will ask you to open up a second tab and play Mexican Flyer in the background because I will get sued if I put it in the background. But uh, check it, all you groovy space cats. It's everyone's favorite uh, space channel 5 uh, reporter, ooh la la, in her classic space channel 5 attire. Apparently you can get Space Channel 5 2 outfits as well, which is kind of neat. Uh, she comes with her little ray gun strapped to her thigh, she has a microphone, she has like a little uh, headset, which is a pain in the ass to put in. Again, it's like a puzzle that doesn't want to fit. Uh, this was my second most expensive thing out of these, next to uh, the Puyo Puyo Girl. This was about $5. Okay, uh, now like I said, there was a second uh, time I tried to order some stuff, and all I got was... Um, what was it? Uh, Sega Rally. And I lost out on every other thing I saw that I kind of wanted, but there was one big thing coming up I absolutely knew I had to get in on. And I, I managed to talk my way back into being able to buy stuff from this guy. And I'm glad I did, because I got this guy. Oh, wait, hold on. No, no, he comes later. Sorry, sorry, that's a tease, that's a tease. Uh, again, uh, you kind of had to buy some stuff just to justify the free shipping that you got with it. So the first thing I bought, which happened before the big guy that I'm going to talk about, was a mobile suit that is no stranger to the show. And uh, if you're a fan of the show, you should know this. We've got the Blue Destiny Unit 1. And the moment we want to focus on this guy, that would be super helpful. There we go. Comes with a shield, comes with a gun. Uh, the pose is not great, but, uh, you know, this is the only Blue Destiny Unit 1 I actually have, which is kind of weird for me, but, um, I've got a Unit 3 model kit. I'd like to get a Unit 1 at some point. But, uh, like the Cubelay, I've tried to buy a bunch of them, but uh, I'm just cursed. I, every time I try and get one, it, like, just, either the seller turns out to be a fraud or something, so I, I need more Cubelay and Unit 1 stuff. Anyway, there was a big thing I really wanted to get. And uh, here it is. I'm not sure how to pose this because he's a little bit awkward, but damn if I'm not going to show him off. This is a Legiacris Monster Hunter. Uh, the Abyssal Legiacris Monster Hunter, to be specific. In fact, this is not one, but two deluxe premium um, UFO catcher prizes. Because you can't get the weapons with the character, you have to get both individually. And I've seen only one of these ever on sale. It was $200. I got this guy for about $25. And that was still more than I wanted to pay, but still, I, I knew it was, it was sort of like, I have to act on this or I will never see this again. And it was something that was very, very personal to me because, like I said a little earlier, Legiacris is my favorite monster, and I spent a lot of time hunting it. And, uh, well, it, it's not a Legiacris figure. The hunter is certainly something that's very, very cool for me. 
Um, I I'm very proud I have this. Oh no! <laughs> He's that cool. He gets to knock down some other lesser figures. Uh, okay, what else do we have? Uh, after that, we got a couple others. Like I said, I, I didn't win a lot of stuff. Like, when, when I wanted to get uh, this guy, I won the Blue Destiny, and I had, like, uh, four or five other things I really wanted to get, and unfortunately, most of them all slipped through my fingers. But I did get two. The first thing we got was the Hummable, Hummable, Movable, Movenize model. All a bunch of nonsense from Ben Presto's, I guess game prize division, which is apparently a thing. Oh no, Cammy fell down. Oh well. You will bow to the mightiness of the RX-782. Now, I'm not super, super familiar with this line. I know that if you look at the back, uh, they made a gym, and I think they made a bunch of G Gundam stuff. But what really interested me was the colors on this, because it's not the standard blue, yellow, and red. Instead, it's more of a... Uh, and I'm not sure the camera will even pick it up, but it's more of a pink, a sort of electric blue, and a... Uh, Slightly different yellow, but uh, I've, I've been told these are actually pretty rare, and I, I thought I'd just crack it open on here. So let's let's open this bad boy up, because I'm I'm genuinely interested in seeing this. It was new, by the way. Ignore the tape on the uh, the uh, figure, because apparently the giant uh, dented box and everything apparently means new. But I'm I'm really interested in seeing this thing. Yeah, it's not, it's not really in the standard Gundam colors. It's actually sort of like in this really bright, uh, bright uh, set. Oh no, you're coming apart. Let's build you while we're here. You look really, really easy to build. So you just snap the waist to there. Come on. Nah, it doesn't want to go on. That's a really tight joint. There we go. We got like a little uh, RX-782. Comes with some weapons. Comes with a shield. Let's make some more noise and take these out. And outfit them because what's a uh, loot video without some kind of unboxing? Use my teeth because good dental care. Throw the shield across the room because let's care about the shield of course. Let's see, kind of have to hook it up to about there, I think. Let's see if we spin that around. And this is all freaking blurry, I know, I apologize. But, uh, ah, well, I'll fix that later. Uh, anyway, we got this weird sort of neon Gundam. One thing that really interests me is it's not all boxy, it's kind of curved down here. Like, uh, the chest part is really curved downwards and stuff. Um, I've been told these guys are really, really, um, like, posable. Like, you can pose them pretty much any way you want, and I'm just knocking everything over now. But, uh, blurry or not, that is a very cool RX-782 with a very cool shield that we're just going to knock over because style points. Alright, everything else can get knocked over for all I care. Uh, so we got one more thing from that seller. More Gundam. This is the Gundam Deluxe. The Full Armor and Char Custom uh, Rick Dom, which is a weird combination. Normally you'd see the G3 because the Char Custom Rick Dom came with uh, the uh, G3 normally because those are who uh, fought in the novel. Also, really old tape. It's like orange. It's really gross. But um, let's let's take these guys out of the package too. Again, pretending I know what I'm doing on camera, even though I clearly don't. <laughs> Learning process, damn it. Now I think this one. Oh no, no, it doesn't. I, I was gonna say I think this one actually was missing a part, the uh, heat rod. But no, it's there. So let's let's get this out. Okay, there's the heat rod. Get the Rick Dom out of there. Now again, I'm not the biggest Dom fan, but let's catch the uh, full armor before it falls down. But uh, it's it's the Shar Rick Dom. You kind of have to respect. Let's pop that hand off because we don't need it. Because why would you use the heat rod? I ask you. 
when in fact you could have the beam bazooka. And I think that's pretty damn cool right there. Apparently this set comes also, like, uh, it, it doesn't come with, but there was apparently like a perfect Zeong as well. Although I've, I've not seen it. Um, but these are pretty cool, and they look like they're roughly the same scale as my destroyed gym in Zagok down there. Roughly, I would say about 1 400th scale, but uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. Let's, let's knock down the Blue Destiny. Actually... Yeah, those two things are about the same head height. That's really cool. That's that's really cool. Come on, stand up, Rick Dom. All right. Okay, what do we got next? Uh, next we have my Spider-Man pin. I got this from the uh, digital edition of um, well, Spider-Man, obviously. Uh, it took forever to get here. I mean, I literally got this like a couple of days ago, and Spider-Man came out in the early, early September, but still, pretty cool I finally have this. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'll probably hang it on the wall next to my uh, Scarlet Spider figure or something, but uh, pretty neat that I have this. And uh, we got a few more coming, but uh, I have to clear some room and clear up my memory card, so I'll be back in just a sec. I have no idea how clear this is going to come through, but this has been like three hours of recording. <laughs> uh, anyway, we got a couple other things. Uh, this came in literally just today. This is a Gundam Converge limited color wing Gundam, my favorite Gundam of all time. I've, I've seen lots of these Gundam Converge things, and they vary pretty wildly in price. Uh, I was looking up the Cubalay earlier, and the Gundam Converge was like $40, but uh, I... I I just wanted to see what this was like. And it's actually really small. I knew it would be pretty small, but it's actually about 25% smaller than I thought it would be. But uh, let's let's take a look and see what we got in here. So we've got... And apparently, like, the uh, special coloring just means that the uh, yellow bits are going to be slightly golder. But uh, let's, let's open this up and see what we can do. Because I'd like to see if we could put this together in a few seconds. Hold on. Again, good dental hygiene. Use your teeth to open things. Got like a little stand madoodle. We have one of the wingalings. We have another one of those wingalings, which I just dumped under the camera. Another wing. We have the very, very cool shield. And of course, you know, it was cheap, but also the fact that it was the Wing Gundam, because similar to how I really like the Cubalay and the Unit 1, I do not have anything with my favorite mobile suit. And I'm not sure how clear this is going to be, but, uh, yeah, that, that, uh, is not going to autofocus well, I don't think, but right there, it actually has the unit number on it, which is pretty cool. And, you know, I just... I felt bad that I didn't have anything with my favorite Gundam, and it was super, super cheap, so I figured, you know, all right. As a fun little Christmas gift to myself, because, you know, there, there's not really much Christmas gift going on here. Uh, next we have... The body. And the head. In the same parts. Got the head. And then, finally, we have the... Oh, that's kind of neat, actually. Okay, I take it back. It's not just yellow is gold. We got the little buster gun once I get it out of this package. And uh, this is actually really cool. The buster gun, which I'm not sure how well it's going to come out on camera, but it's kind of a gun metal. That's pretty cool. And then finally, of course, we have the Gundam V fin, the most important part of any Gundam, really. Yieldy V fin. So I assume we just slap this onto the head. Like so, like so, slap said head onto the body, like so. Kind of like how glossy the eyes are. Again, I'm not sure how well this, the camera's going to pick it up, but the eyes shine pretty well green. So the shield in that peg, take the wings, and slot them in. How do they go in? I see. Like that. 
of course. I was putting it in sideways like a dumb, like that. And then finally we take the pre-made hand and gun, and we slot the pre-made hand and gun. And I hope this is looking pretty well, because I have to kind of half look at my uh, camera while I'm doing this and half look around it, so I'm not sure. Come on, go in, magical hand of weapons. Magical hand of weapons. There we go. And we now have my favorite uh, mobile suit. Nice little guy. Stop focusing on my hand. Uh, I just love this little design. It was nice. There's lots of lots of detail too. I'm gonna have fun uh, panel lining the crap out of this with my markers later, but uh, that was a fun little mini build that lasted all of a few seconds. Uh, okay, uh, we got two more. This one I got from uh, China, but I saw a bunch of these by the same seller. This is a character from um, Puzzle and Dragons, and I'm not familiar with that game too much. I know my uncle had a DS copy, and uh, I just knocked over something. I apologize to whatever I knocked over. And uh, I just thought this looked really cool. It came with this big-ass sword that's like half a dragon, and it just looked really good, and it was a dollar. It's like, wow, that's as big as Sumeragi, and wow, that thing just looks cool. And finally, we have this thing. I've worn one of these for a very long time. Not sure how uh, well that's going to come out in camera, but it says MS-06 Zaku 2. This is a 150th scale Zaku head in a Gashapon ball. Like, the ball itself is the head. And uh, I'm not going to unwrap it here. I'm not going to make this video any longer. I know people probably didn't appreciate that I just started unwrapping shit, but uh, I thought it would be fun. Um, but I thought, even though it's not in my wheelhouse, maybe I would uh, try and build one of these on camera because I thought it might be a fun little thing to do, and I've heard these are really easy to build, like any idiot can build it in about 10 minutes. So uh, if you want to see me do that, or if I get bored, maybe I'll do that. But um, this is the Johnny Ryden Zaku 2 head, which means it has it's red and it has a better color scheme than Char. And uh, I've heard these things are pretty rare, but at the same time, this is from the second series of these things, and apparently we're up to like series 8, and now they're building like full busts of them with like mechanics and stuff, so I don't know. But uh, very, very cool. And oh yes, from our Wing Gundam, we also get the legendary piece of chewing gum. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why uh, little, uh, little toys come with chewing gum. I think it's either a tax dodge or uh, a way to reclassify it so it can be sold in convenience stores and stuff as like a food product. Uh, if anyone actually knows why, uh, let me know. But I think that it is because there's like some tax break if there is some form of consumable with it, but it's probably really old gum. Uh, anyway, we're almost done, but we still have one more set of things I want to show you. And I'll be back in just a sec. Alright, so we are at the final leg of our journey of this giant treasure chest of awesome. And if you've made it this far, congratulations. Who am I kidding to? I'm talking to myself at this point. <laughs> anyway, uh, next we have something else I'm quite passionate about. Gunpla! Well, the, the first one isn't, but uh, still, the idea is the same. Now, if you'll recall, there was that uh, figure guy I bought a bunch of stuff from, as well as Sega Rally that one time. He had a couple model kits. He had like a high-grade Zeta he was charging like $50 for for some reason. But I saw this, and it was about $6, and I decided to jump on it. This is the Diengar. I think that's how you spell it. It's a Super Robot Wars uh, machine. I'm not super familiar with it. Though I thought it looked a little bit like the, um, what was it, the Susano from Double O. So I'm kind of thinking about maybe painting it to look like that, but there is something about this that alarms me a little bit. Right there. It says Kotobukiya. Now, I've only built one Kotobukiya kit ever. Well, built. I attempted it, and it's the one kit I've never finished, but uh, in my experience, Kotobukiya kits are really expensive and really under good. Um... I, I tried to build the Metarot Rakusho thing, and it immediately, like, broke into millions of pieces. It was such a small thing, and it cost way more than it should have. Like, uh, a, a standard uh, high-grade kit should not cost more than maybe $15 to $20. Uh, a standard Kotobukiya kit, which is going to be smaller than that, usually costs 70 or 80 <laughs> So, But this was $6, and I thought that would be kind of neat. Uh, next thing we have... Uh, I bought off AmiAmi, Ami, and, and the rest of this will be off there as well, but um, 
I bought because I saw a pre-order for a gaming figure that I really, really wanted because the game was garbage, but it was a character I really liked. And I'm still waiting on it, it hasn't been delivered yet. But whenever you buy from an online uh, Japanese hobby store, you immediately have to be paying like $30 for shipping, no matter how small your first purchase is. So you gotta buy a few things just to justify it. And AmiAmi has the fantastic thing that is um, pre-owned, which means that you buy something that someone bought once, left in their basement, never opened, and you get free basement smell. So, you know, bonus! Um, but uh, their, their website is garbage. They don't have uh, the ability to sort by newest or uh, by price, which kind of sucks. And ironically, when I first went on there this time, uh, they had a thing where if your computer had any cookies on it whatsoever, you just couldn't view anything on their website. And uh, we'll, we'll talk more about why their website sucks later. Oh, also, if you buy anything from them, you have to commit to purchasing before they'll tell you how much it ships, which is a terrifying thing. But this is the first kit I got, and feel free to make fun of me, everyone out there who knows Gundam. This is a G-Reco kit. This is the guy on. Um, it's one of the few G-Reco designs I really like. It's this, the Dahawk, and if you take away the ugly, ugly alien head, the G-Self looked pretty good. But this thing has, uh, let's, let's see if we can find the sides. It has a backpack that's basically like hands that shoot out laser swords. I, I love the beam saber hands. Uh, I'm thinking about painting this, but uh, one thing I found that was weird is its entire face is a sticker. And I've not seen that since the old Gundam wing kits back in the day. <laughs> okay, uh, this next one is the MS-06C Zaku 2 Type-C. And if you're familiar with Gundam, you've probably heard of Mecha Gaikatsu. It was his review that made me get this, because he said he'd never built a Zaku before, and he said this was the best one he could get. I've never built a Zaku before, and I figured now was the time. I'm not sure if I'm just going to panel line it, not sure if I'm going to customize it, give it my own paint job, not sure yet. But uh, very, very excited to have this. Uh, okay, this next thing is something I've wanted for a little while as well. This is the Goof R35. The Romba Rall custom Goof with the twin shields, the really nice um, Zaku high mobility type legs that I just love, like the super wide legs, plus their sword holsters. Uh, like I said, I didn't get much for Christmas this year, but my grandma got me an um, uh, 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 airbrush kit, and I've been wanting to uh, try doing a candy coating airbrush, as, as I've seen on um, Gunpla Lab, another Gunpla website or YouTube channel you should check out. But I saw that and I thought, you know, this would be a great kit to do that with. Okay, now, kind of like I said, Ami Ami's website was kind of garbage, right? Well. Here's another kit I added to my list, and this is a stopgap measure for me. This is the Gundam X Mao. Now, I have just started watching Gundam X this year. I didn't watch it up to this point because, you know, it got cancelled early. I thought that meant it sucked, but it uh, turns out it's awesome. But even when I thought it sucked, I loved the Gundam X design. And I've always wanted a Master Grade Gundam X, but no one has it. So this is basically just a stopgap measure until I get one proper. But here's where AmiAmi's website kind of failed a second time. See, I had this, all of these, plus one more kit in my uh, cart. I was ready to pay, and I saw one more thing that got added. It was a, um, it was a, a stray gold frame Amatsu Mina custom, and it was a special clear version that had, and I don't care about clear versions, but it had a plated uh, gold frame, so it actually made sense to have it clear, and I wanted it so bad, so I went to pay for it, and every time I went to pay for it, all this stuff would appear in my cart, and just as I was about to confirm, like, the final thing before you get to purchase, everything would disappear from my cart except for this, and I have no idea why, and I went through the customer service, and it took two days, and I literally had to fix their website for them, and uh, when I finally did get to buy stuff, everything was there but the Amatsumina. So I, I stewed and I stewed and I got kind of pissed about it, but uh, I waited one extra day before I confirmed and I'm glad I did because this bad boy showed up. This is, let's see if we can get it on camera, the Master Grade Gym Sniper 2. I love the Gym Sniper 2. Um, it's, it's my favorite gym next to like the Gym Dominance, which makes it my second favorite gym. Um, I've seen the high grid and I was not terribly impressed, so I was actually going into this planning on painting it my own colors. I was going to give it like a, um, 
a black and gray color scheme to make it sort of like a black ops thing because the original one was like this sky blue and like this really awkward orange and, and like a dark blue. But then I saw this color of blue and it's like, wow, that's so pretty. So I, I'm genuinely not sure if I'm going to paint this or not. I, I'm very torn. Um, I might just have to get two later when, when things finally start turning around for me. Hopefully, this year has been really rough, but uh, hopefully. And uh, then I'll have two Master Grade Gem Sniper 2s, but that's pretty rare because I don't get Master Grades all that often. But speaking of, we got one more, and it's bigger than my entire table. So, uh, let's take the entire tripod back a sec. This is the Master Grade Crossbone Gundam Full Cloth. This thing is very old. It predates stands for Gunpla. <laughs> And its weapons are ridiculous. It's got a giant sword, giant beam crossbow, and it can't hold any of it, but damn if it's cool. And like I showed you, I've got a super pilot mobile suit. Time I get a super pirate mobile suit. And let's just be honest, if you've already got the Special Forces Age 2, getting the Dark Hound is just a downgrade. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed that I finally got a hold of the crossbow full cloth. And that is everything I've purchased over the past six months. Uh, that was... From a lot of money I saved from my last job, um, a few generous donations to the channel, as well as uh, some of the last of my unemployment checks, as well as a few odd jobs I've done over the past few months. Um, but I had fun doing this. Uh, I'm, I'm sure lots of it was out of focus. Again, I apologize. It's a learning process. This is the second time I've done it. <laughs> um, but I would like to do this more. I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll do it every three months, so like once a quarter or something. Let me know what you think. Um, and if you want to help make sure that I can do more of this and more stuff in general, uh, definitely check out my Patreon and support me there because that is my income at this point. <laughs> um, and the employment situation is not looking all that great around here. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, feel free to comment and subscribe and all that jazz. And again, uh, definitely take a look at uh, my Patreon because I could use any help at this point to keep this channel running and uh, keep myself running, honestly. And, uh, you know, get yourself on the Patreon Supporters Discord where we can talk about all this awesome stuff that I got and awesome stuff I plan on doing in the future with some of this stuff as well as awesome plans I have for the channel in the future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I will catch you next time. Peace out, Internet.